Today on the Forgiven Nutritionist podcast, I'm talking with Dr. Deb Matthew. She's known as America's Happy Hormones Doctor. She's a best selling author, international speaker, educator, wife, and mom of four boys. After suffering for years with fatigue and irritability due to hormone imbalances, her quest to resolve her personal health led her to change everything about her practice of medicine. She has been featured on national podcasts, radio, and broadcast shows, including NBC, ABC, Fox, and CBS. Here's a clip from today's show. I remember one time when one of my kids was kicking the soccer ball against the living room wall, and I lost my mind. I had steam coming out of my ears, my head spun around, and I just shrieked at him get the ball out of my house now. And I'm going to tell you, honestly, that exorcist voice made that kid move. But I felt so guilty afterwards, because that's not the kind of mom that I wanted to be. And it was really my husband who bore the brunt of my Wicked Witch of the West impersonation, the poor guy, he used to call from the car on the way home from work. And he could kind of tell by the tone of my voice, whether it was safe to come home or whether he needed to put a whole suit of armor before he walked in the door. And it was really so confusing because nothing in my medical training helped me understand what had happened to me. And, you know, this was a while ago before we had Karens, but, you know, now we have these women who sometimes say things they shouldn't say or do things they shouldn't really do. And so that was me. And what really changed for me is my husband gave me a book that was written by Suzanne Summers. And you remember Suzanne Summers, right? She was Chrissy Snow in Three's Company. She's the thigh master lady. And he saw this book and on the back cover had all those bullet points, you know, about, you know, are you irritable? Are you tired all the time? No longer enjoy the things you used to enjoy. And he, he, it reminded me of him. But when I looked at the book and I saw, you know, Chrissy Snow's face on the cover looking back at me, I just thought, you've got to be kidding me. Because you know that doctors don't want to get our medical information from celebrities. But he looked at me and he said, we got to do something. And, and he was right. Hey, everyone, just a quick break to show some gratitude to our sponsors and give you some special deals. I don't know if you've heard about Metabolic Daily, but here are what two of my clients recently told me. My cravings have decreased and I feel so much better. I'm finally able to manage my weight. I no longer crave sugar and sweets and my blood sugar levels have been stable. Metabolic Daily naturally replenishes your gut microbiome and supports healthy weight because it helps your body do more with the good food you eat. It supports butyrate and GLP-1. GLP-1 is a hormone produced in the gut that helps reduce appetite, releases insulin, and controls blood sugar. Butyrate is a short-chain fatty acid that helps with blood sugar response, gut permeability, and immune function. Unlock an exclusive 20% discount on your first month's membership by entering my unique code when you click on the link tree link in the show notes. Thank you so much again for joining us tonight, Dr. Deb. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I know today we're going to be talking about a couple of things, including circadian rhythm and how it relates to hormone health and even bioidentical hormones. So why don't you tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got to be known as the happy hormones doctor? Sure. Well, I used to be tired all of the time. I was so exhausted. Napping was my favorite hobby. And I was cold all the time. I used to carry a sweater with me everywhere, even in the summer in North Carolina, because when I would go in air conditioned movie theaters and restaurants, I would just shiver uncontrollably. And that's before we have those refrigerated rooms. Like, you know, in Sam's Club now, they've got the room you have to go in to get your spinach. I would have never made it out of there alive. Um, but I didn't understand what was going on and it had been going on for so long. I just thought that I was a cold natured person who needed more sleep than everybody else. And when I was in my late thirties, things got even worse because I started to get anxious and I would wake up in the middle of the night with panic attacks for no reason. And I was super irritable. Like I remember one time when one of my kids was kicking the soccer ball against the living room wall. And I lost my mind. I had steam coming out of my ears. My head spun around and I just shrieked at him. Get the ball out of my house now. And I'm going to tell you, honestly, that exorcist voice made that kid move. 
But I felt so guilty afterwards because that's not the kind of mom that I wanted to be. And it was really my husband who bore the brunt of my Wicked Witch of the West impersonation, the poor guy. He used to call from the car on the way home from work and he could kind of tell by the tone of my voice whether it was safe to come home or whether he needed to put a whole suit of armor before he walked in the door. And it was really so confusing because nothing in my medical training helped me understand what had happened to me. And, you know, this was a while ago before we had Karens, but... You know, now we have these women who sometimes say things they shouldn't say or do things they shouldn't really do. And so that was me. And what really changed for me is my husband gave me a book that was written by Suzanne Summers. And you remember Suzanne Summers, right? She was Chrissy Snow in Three's Company. She's the thigh master lady. And he saw this book and on the back cover had all those bullet points, you know, about, you know, are you irritable? Are you tired all the time? No longer enjoy the things you used to enjoy. And he, he, it reminded me of him. But when I looked at the book and I saw, you know, Chrissy Snow's face on the cover looking back at me, I just thought, you've got to be kidding me. Because you know that doctors don't want to get our medical information from celebrities. But he looked at me and he said, we got to do something. And, and he was right. And when I read that book and I heard about all the stories of these women who had been just like me and how much better they felt when they got their hormones in balance, it really allowed me to open my mind. I understood finally what was going wrong with me. And it also led me to places where I could go in order to get properly trained because there is a lot of science behind this. It's not woo-woo medicine. Um, and as a result, I was able to get my hormones back in balance and my kids got their mom back. My husband got his wife back. I got my life back but I couldn't go back to just writing prescriptions all day long because that didn't make any sense to me anymore. So for the last 17 years now, I've been helping men and women get their hormones back in balance so they can get well, get off a lot of those prescription drugs and love the way they feel. When you hear some of your medical advice from a celebrity, you don't always really want to, um, you get kind of frustrated because you think all these doctors all these years and no one ever once told me, you know, about that? And why couldn't some of the doctors have told me about that? So since we're uh, going to be talking about circadian rhythms today, maybe you should tell us a little bit, uh, my listeners, a little bit about what the circadian rhythm is and maybe why it's important for your overall health. Yeah, sure. So a circadian rhythm just means um, we have these biologic clocks in our body and things cycle depending on the time of day. We have cycles that go, you know, depending on the month, like our menstrual cycle. Um, there's lots of different examples of how things cycle. And it turns out that these cycles, the circadian rhythm is mostly talking about our daily cycles, are really, really important to our overall health. And our hormones generally work on a cycle. So a lot of our, like our um, female hormones and the male hormones like testosterone often get released at night while we're in a deep sleep. So if we're not sleeping very well, that can impact our hormones. But, um, but getting out of balance, getting out of this circadian rhythm is actually very disruptive to our overall health. And it's just one of the many modern factors that can increase our risk of symptoms and even actual diseases. Yeah. And I don't think, unfortunately, a lot of people even give sleep or good quality sleep, I should say, um, enough credit for their the impact that it can have on their blood sugar regulation, You know, especially when you know anything from um, moods to blood sugar to your blood pressure. And I just don't think that people uh, correlate the two. And unfortunately, I don't think enough general practitioners definitely correlate the two or even talk to their patients. So maybe you can discuss the role of what some of the hormones are that um, are impacted by the circadian rhythm and what it does for our overall hormone balance. So I think the most important one for us to talk about is cortisol. And cortisol is our main stress hormone. So when we're caught in traffic or we got to deal with teenage kids or our boss who's being unreasonable or whatever the stresses are of the day, our cortisol levels go up in order to help us cope with the stress. That's a good thing. But when we have chronic stress day in and day out, our cortisol levels can end up sort of remaining chronically elevated. And this kind of high cortisol level 
is not healthy for us. It kind of puts us in this fight or flight response. Um, and so that can cause more anxiety. We don't sleep soundly. It can drive up our blood sugar. It can drive up our blood pressure. It can cause food cravings. We gain belly fat, you know, that weight right around our middle. Um, mood changes like anxiety and depression. There's many, many things that start to go wrong if cortisol is chronically elevated. Another one that's really common is High cortisol is toxic to our hippocampus, which is the part of our brain responsible for short-term memory. So our memory starts to go. Um, and eventually we can't maintain these high cortisol levels for a long time. And our system will start to shut cortisol down. And now cortisol levels will start to drop inappropriately. So now you don't have enough cortisol to help you cope with the stress of the day. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think far too many can people can relate to that. Um, and I, again, when I think back to how I previously was before, um, my hormones, I'm sure were at play. And I know that, like I said, not one gynecologist or even my regular practitioner ever tested my hormones to see what was going on. Um, and I used to joke, and I can't believe I used to joke like this, but I used to joke that I was like those goats that had narcolepsy where all of a sudden they would just fall over and fall asleep. That was, I used to joke that that was me because that's literally how I felt all the time, especially in the afternoon. And, you know, looking back, um, it, I, it had to have been my blood sugars. And I know that my circadian rhythm was off. And so, um, yeah, it was it was awful. And it's just unfortunate that that's how I, I lived for so long. Could we maybe talk for just a minute about testing cortisol and why? Because you had mentioned, right, your like practitioners don't generally talk about this. Um, and one of the reasons is what we are taught at medical school is that someone could have a tumor that makes way too much cortisol. That's like a life threatening problem. Or there's an autoimmune condition where your adrenal glands, that's what makes cortisol, they fail on you. So now you can't make enough. That's a life threatening problem. So we learn about those two extremes in medical school. We're not talking about life threatening problems here. We're just talking about stress that's beating you down so that you don't feel good. Um, and that doesn't show up on the tests that we do for these life threatening problems. Also, if all you do is go to the lab and get a blood level done for your cortisol level, that's just one point in the day. And cortisol is changing over the day because of your circadian rhythms. And so you're going to get a completely different number if you go at eight in the morning or one in the afternoon or at 430 on the way home from work. So the much better way for us to test for cortisol is to actually do either a saliva test or a urine test where we do multiple samples over 24 hours so that we can see the peak and trough of the cortisol. It's supposed to be highest in the morning so that you wake up and jump out of bed. And then it's supposed to gradually go down over the day so that it's nice and low at night. You're calm, relaxed, you can sleep and have a nice good sleep um, so that you can wake up refreshed the next day. So it is possible to do the testing, but this is not something that's routinely done in a regular doctor's office. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why personally I like the Dutch test because um, one of their tests uh, does the cortisol awakening response, which tests your circadian rhythm that you were just talking about. And like I said, I look back and I wish I would have had that done a couple times through over the years. Um and recently I had a urine test done uh, for my cortisol awakening response too, because uh, now that I am post-menopausal, um, uh, unfortunately over the last six or eight months, my hormones have changed and uh, I, could, I could tell. And once I had changed my diet and lifestyle back then, um, I had had a, a nice circadian rhythm going. But then once I reached this next phase in my life, which was about six or eight months ago, yeah, I got off track a little bit and it's not as bad as it used to be, but I definitely was off track with my sleep and my circadian rhythm. So one of the things that can be really helpful is keeping a regular um, time for getting up in the morning and going to sleep. Another hormone that re has really important circadian rhythms is melatonin. And we think of that as the one that helps us to um, go to sleep at night. So if we can get up in the morning at a regular hour and go to sleep at a fairly regular hour, those circadian rhythms kind of stay in sync. 
um, and it will help us to get a better quality of sleep and therefore be more rested um, the next day. So regular hours is really important. Stress reduction is also really important because when we are under these chronic stresses and that's knocking cortisol out of whack, when cortisol gets knocked out of whack, it knocks melatonin out of whack and then we don't sleep and it just messes up everything even more. So some of the simple things that we can do to help manage stress, we can't eliminate. I mean, if there are things you could do to simplify your life and reduce your stress, that's awesome, but we can't get rid of everything. And it's really not so much about how much stress do you have? And it's more about how do you allow the stress to affect you? So if you do meditation or breathing exercises or mindfulness or yoga or go out for a walk in nature, any kind of exercise, really all of those things are helping to bring some balance. Um, they're helping to calm down the stress response so that whatever stresses you have, it's helping to protect you from the negative effects of that stress. Um, a really great stress reducing technique is gratitude because our bodies can't feel stressed or angry or, you know, scared or at the same time as we feel grateful. So if you catch yourself all stressed out, worrying about things, and um, if you can think of three things that you're grateful for, it really just helps to bring things back into perspective. It really allows all of the body chemistry to kind of settle down. Um, and, and it's such powerful medicine. If we could just pack that in a pill, we would, but you know, we can't, but, um, gratitude is free. We can all do it. Doesn't really take any time. You don't have to have fancy gym shoes or anything like that. Um, and it's really powerful medicine. So regular sleeping hours, um, managing stress in a healthy way. Of course, eating healthy food. We have to nourish our body. We want whole foods, how they're found in nature, all different colors of the rainbow. Um, we want to make sure that you're getting healthy fats in your diet because all these hormones that we're talking about today um, are made out of cholesterol. So cholesterol is not a terrible thing, but we need enough of the healthy fats in our diet, not the trans fats, not the deep fried food. So olive oil, um, wild caught fish, nuts and seeds, those kinds of things. Um, so sleep, stress management, healthy nutrition, and moving your body. So exercise, um, physical movement is so, so important to keep our hormones balanced, to keep our circadian rhythms going. And it, it may not be the best thing to exercise at bedtime. It may be a better idea to exercise earlier in the day um, in order to help our circadian rhythms to kind of stay on track. Yeah. And again, I'm sitting here right now and I'm just, I myself am nodding my head at all the things you're saying because it is 100% everything that had happened to me. And I wish I could go back um, and tell myself some of the things that I've learned uh, over the years just from trial and error and from some of the things that I learned during my schooling that I've gone through. But um, I guess the silver lining is that um, I had to go through some of the crap that I went through to get me where I am today, right? Um, because I had no idea at the time about uh, functional medicine or integrated medicine or even anything holistic, um, maybe do you have a recommendation or a suggestion where people can go to find some practitioners that maybe they, those practitioners will dig a little deeper? Because I know that, like I said, back then I had no, no clue about any of the places that um, I could go to find some of those practitioners. Yeah, and, and I didn't either. Um, I was a quote unquote regular doctor and I had no idea about any of these things. So if you're just a regular person, of course, how are you supposed to know about these things too? So I do have two websites that people can go to. One of them is called A4M. So the letter A, the number four, the letter M, um, it stands for American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, A4M.com. And the other one is IFM, stands for Institute of Functional Medicine, IFM.org. And these are two um, big organizations that train healthcare practitioners from all over the world. So they train doctors and nurse practitioners and health coaches and nutritionists and pharmacists and all different kinds of um, practitioners who really want to understand how to get their patients well, really get to the root cause of why somebody may have some symptoms instead of just writing another prescription, which, you know, might cover up the symptom. But prescriptions generally don't make you well, especially for chronic symptoms like what we're talking about, fatigue, insomnia, 
bloating, weight gain, brain fog. Um, we don't really have good medicines for those, but there's the good news is there is so, so much that we can do to take control of our own health and change how we're feeling, get our hormones back into balance. And the younger you are, the more the chance is that you'll be able to just change some lifestyle habits and get your hormones back into balance. Once you get past menopause, then sometimes you need a little bit more. Yeah. And I know that recently I was just talking with someone who's in their twenties and their circadian rhythm is very off. And unfortunately, they have a lot of other hormone issues as well. And um, unfortunately, they're not regulated very well. And I think that when I was talking with this person, I, I tried to mention how it's going to take a while to get your circadian rhythm back. Um, unfortunately, we live in an Amazon world where we want everything, you know, in two days or sometimes even one day we want it or same day. It's definitely going to take a lot longer um, then two or three days, uh, or it's going to take longer than one or two weeks to even get your circadian rhythm back. You have to be very intentional with it and, um, give it some time because it's, it's really about the habits. Um, you have to get yourself in a habit of doing these things. And, and when you pick a certain bedtime, uh, for example, 10 o'clock, uh, is now your new bedtime. Um, you're definitely not just going to all of a sudden fall asleep at 10 o'clock. Your body has to now then get in that habit. I mean, you might get lucky once in a while. If you're falling asleep at 2 a.m. regularly and all of a sudden you decide, okay, from now on, it's going to be 10 p.m., you're right. It takes a while. It's it's like going through a time change, right? It's like traveling and now you have to get, get used to a new time change. It takes a little bit for your body to adjust. Hopefully people realize that um, they need to give themselves a little bit of grace too. And to your point, if they're used to going to bed at 2 um, maybe cutting it back to 10 PM is not the greatest thing. Maybe they need to cut it back just, you know, an hour, um, at first and then, uh, cut it back a little bit every couple of days or so, or, or maybe even once a week. Um, and they can hit it gradually over time. Um, but yeah, I, I tried to impress upon this person when I was talking with them that, uh, yeah, because we live in an Amazon world, we want things right then and there. And I'm definitely guilty of this as well. Um, but it's nef definitely not uh, a quick fix. And uh, especially when it comes to the circadian rhythm, definitely gets a little trickier as you get older. And I can definitely attest to that. And like I said before, I wish I could have done some, some things different back then. Um, and then uh, also because my kids would have benefited more um, from me being present and engaged with all and involved with them a little bit more where you're struggling with a little more of the depression and anxiety and I, which is definitely more serious. And, um, so maybe you're not being, you're not able to be in, engaged or involved with your kids either, or just be present with them, uh, you know, for certain things. And it's one of my kids would wake up at five in the morning and he would, if I tried to park him in front of the TV so that I could go back to sleep beside him on the couch and he'd like do this with my eyeballs to make sure that I stayed awake. It was so painful. I used to find that um, bath time, like bedtime was the hardest time of the day. So I had these four boys, I'm trying to wrestle them into their pajamas and throw them in the bathtub and, and they were loud. And by the end of the day, I was so exhausted. I was barely functioning. And so what should have been this wonderful time when we were reading stories and had this cuddling and togetherness, I just wanted them to go to sleep because I was so done. And I think that all moms would say like, okay, well, it's the end of the day. You're a mom. Of course you're tired. Like kids wear you down, but it was so far beyond that. And now I, I've had the, like all these really great opportunities. I've written two books. I've been on TV. I've done all these really great things, even just changing my medical profession um, and starting my own practice. I would have never been able to do those things if I hadn't got my hormones back in balance, because I would still be lying on the couch, staring at the laundry basket, waiting for the clothes to fold themselves because I did not have one iota of energy left to get those clothes put away. Well, and luckily now we have bioidentical hormones and um, that can sometimes be a help. Uh, and like you said before, and like I try to tell people as well, my clients are just people I'm talking to that there's no supplement and there's no medication or anything that's going to fix your problems, especially if you don't do some diet and lifestyle kind of changes first. Uh, but since we were, since I just brought up bioidentical hormones, uh, like I said, I just started them a couple months ago 
and uh, it definitely has been a godsend for my sleep. Um, I feel so much better now. I feel more refreshed. Um, I feel definitely a little more like myself. So maybe you could tell us exactly uh, what are bioidentical hormones, because I think there might be a uh, that might be a new concept for some people to think of versus just hormones. So bioidentical hormones are hormones that are an exact match for what our body makes. So at least in theory, your body can't tell the difference between whether the hormone came from your ovaries or from the pharmacy. And that's important because if you're deficient in a hormone, you just want to replace it with exactly what's missing. The reason that we're even having this conversation is because for many, many years, we didn't use bioidentical hormones. We used these synthetic drugs that were man-made and they weren't the exact same thing as our hormones. So they had some of the same effects, but not all of the same effects. And they had some side effects. So when I went through medical school, I had no idea that there was a difference between synthetic hormones and bioidentical hormones. I just thought hormones were hormones. But it turns out that this distinction is really, really important. Um, so bioidentical hormones are now readily available. Um, in some cases, they're covered by your health insurance. In some cases, your regular doctor will prescribe them. Sometimes you have to find a, a doctor who specializes in bioidentical hormones to help you because there's still a lot of doctors who just haven't um, learned about this yet because this is so not part of our medical school training. It's really, really shocking and it's really, really... Um, infuriating how little medical training doctors get about how to help women with perimenopause and menopause. You know, those aren't diseases. And so we're focusing on treating your diabetes or, you know, your high blood pressure, but all this other stuff, all we know how to do is sleeping pills, antidepressants, birth control pills, anxiety pills, you know, stool softeners, if you're constipated, like we just aren't given the right tools. But the good, good news is more and more doctors are on board with understanding that hormones are so, so important for women and for men. They're important for us at any age, whether you're a teenager or in your 20s, whether you're trying to get pregnant, whether you're just trying to maintain your weight, whether you're trying to have energy to get through your day. It's important at all ages and everybody deserves to have balanced hormones. I know it's probably going to depend on age of the person, but when they come to you, um, do you either recommend bioidentical hormones or just hormones in general, or how to kind of you address some of those um, questions or asking if they want to, to go on bioidentical hormones? So one of the first hormones that goes down as we're sort of aging and tippy toeing our way towards menopause is progesterone. And a lot of women will notice in their late thirties that progesterone is already starting to shift and progesterone is the calming hormone. It's the one that helps us feel relaxed and chilled out and we sleep soundly through the night. So if that one is starting to drop, then we tend not to sleep soundly through the night and we wake up at 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. or we're staring at the ceiling and then we don't feel refreshed when we wake up. Um, and we tend to feel more irritable, negative, critical, and all of that just gets worse before our period. Um, but a lot of women will also notice they start to have more anxiety. So this was what was going on with me. My progesterone was going down. I wasn't sleeping well. I was having these panic attacks. Every little thing was just so aggravating to me. Um, and I didn't, I had no idea that progesterone did this for women. All I knew is that it was one of the two hormones that are found in birth control pills. And I had no idea that the hormones in birth control pills aren't actually hormones. They're drugs that are made to mimic our hormones, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that they didn't tell us at medical school. In fact, I joke that I feel like I should get a partial refund because they left a whole bunch of really important stuff out of my medical education. But once I learned about it from reading Suzanne Summer's book and, and went and really found out more, getting my progesterone um, back, what I did was I took natural hormone, uh, natural progesterone, it allowed me to sleep, it allowed me to feel like myself again. And so that was really, really critical. But there are so many women out there that have no idea that the fact that they're not sleeping is anything to do with their hormones. Because I think if you have menstrual changes, or if you have hot flashes, like there are certain things that we think about hormones. But if you're not sleeping, or if your mood is not right, I don't think that automatically would think of a hormone issue especially when you're in your 30s, because when you're in your 30s, you're sure not thinking about menopause yet. Um, so it can be really, really confusing. But 
when we're not sleeping soundly through the night, then we're not doing a great job of making our other hormones. Not sleeping is a huge stress on our body. So that impacts our cortisol levels. And then when cortisol is off, then we're extra tired in the day. We sleep even worse at night. It just makes everything worse. So um, that's one of the big things that, that starts to shift. The next hormone that tends to go down for women is testosterone. We think of testosterone for men, and obviously men definitely have a lot of testosterone, but women actually have 10 times more testosterone than estrogen. So we have more testosterone than estrogen. Um, and as our testosterone is going down, typically while we're in our 40s, again, we don't sleep as well, we get more um, irritable, but we also tend to lose motivation. Testosterone is the motivation hormone so that we can get things accomplished in our self-esteem and confidence. So when testosterone levels start to drop, we can feel like worried about things. We second guess ourselves. Um, we don't, we sort of just go through the motions. Like we feel kind of flat or kind of blah. And whatever really has to happen today, we'll figure out a way to make it happen. But if it doesn't really have to happen today, a lot of times we just kind of procrastinate or push it off to the side because we just don't really feel like it. Um, and when I talk about that with women, especially, generally they're like nodding their head as I'm saying these things because so many women can relate to that. It's such a common experience in sort of midlife women. But again, Nothing in any of those things that I said kind of screams, this must be a hormone problem. And if women were to walk into their doctor's office, let's say a 43-year-old woman walks in and says, hey, doctor, um, I'm not sleeping at night. I feel like a zombie all day. I'm so irritable. I keep screaming at my husband and my kids. I don't really feel like doing the things that I used to enjoy. In fact, I don't really feel like doing anything. Um you know, what's that doctor going to do for her? Like that's got sleeping pill and antidepressant written all over it, right? But if the real problem is hormones, then those the antidepressant isn't really going to fix the problem. And the sleeping pill might help you sleep better, but it's just kind of putting a Band-Aid over the symptom. Yeah. And I always try to impress upon my clients and, and my husband loves when I say this, you you cannot out supplement yourself on a bad diet, out of a bad diet or, or bad lifestyle. And uh, even if your hormones are off and you then start to take bioidentical hormones or hormones, you are not 20 and you can't eat like you're 20. And if you're 20 and struggling, um, yeah, you, you can't out supplement or out hormone um, a bad diet and lifestyle. It's you're not a magic. So it's, it's true, though, that as we get older, our metabolism changes and it does get harder to lose weight you know, when you're over 40 compared with when you were younger. And so some women will find that all the things that they used to do that used to work just don't really work as well for them anymore. Uh, another thing that women will notice, especially as they're going through menopause, is that we sort of start to lose our waist. We sort of start to get thick um, right through the middle. And estrogen is what gives us that waist. And so as we go through menopause, we do tend to get thicker. You know, women will start to complain of the belly fat, um, and the average woman gains about 20 pounds as she goes through menopause. So if you are somebody who ends up choosing to be on bioidentical hormones, they can help you sleep better and feel better and have more energy and be much more motivated so that you're much more likely to chop your broccoli and go to the gym and do all the right things. So they help us to lose weight because they help us to feel better. So we're more likely to do the things um, they do help to normalize our metabolism. So there are occasionally women who will come in and will do nothing but put them on hormone therapy, or let me say that differently, no matter what I tell them to do, they do nothing except go on hormone therapy. And they'll come back a few months later and say, it's so great, I've lost 10 pounds. But they're the exception, not the rule. So usually what happens is at least the hormones kind of put you back into a more stable, normal kind of state of your metabolism so that when you go to the gym, when you eat your healthy foods, when you get the right amount of sleep, when you you know reduce your stress, when you do all the things, you're at least more likely to get the right results that you're looking for. Yeah. And since you brought up side effects, um, because I don't think that people uh, 
are aware, um, or I think they're still under the impression, at least I was even also until the last couple of years myself was under the impression that I'm never going to take hormones. I'm never going to do any kind of hormone therapy, even if it's bioidentical hormones, because I saw what my mom went through uh, in the 80s and some in the t into the 90s. So, or what I thought she was going through because of the hormones. Um, and then uh, also soon after that time, there was the supposed study that had come out um, talking about the additional risks. Um, and I think, think that was in the early 2000s. So then she dramatically changed and uh, everyone stopped taking hormones and she stopped taking them, which then of course dramatically changed her as well and the things that her body was going through. And so I think that... Um, maybe people are kind of still living in, in that fear. So maybe you could touch on some of the actual risks um, or the risks that aren't there that people are still afraid of. Yeah. And, and I would even go one step farther than that to say anybody who's going to be on hormones, we always want to put the hormones in the healthiest body possible because we want the benefits of the hormones. We don't want the risks and the side effects. So if you're somebody who's very inflamed um, because you're eating a lot of sugar, you're not, you know, moving your body. Um, if you're not putting the right nutrition in your body, because you're not eating healthy foods, like if you're just not taking care of yourself, the end result is you end up becoming more inflamed. And then when we go to give you hormones, you're the one that may be at greater risk for having side effects of the hormones, because it's not so much the hormones that cause a problem, it's what your body does with the hormones. And if your body is not functioning properly, because you're not in great health, then um, not only are the hormones not going to fix everything, but you may not have the greatest results from your hormone therapy. Yeah, I know. Um, well, like I said, not, I just learned about this in the last couple of years. And I was actually uh, within the last two years, really, where I really learned a lot more. And the switch kind of flipped in my brain. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I see it now. Now I see. Um, and so I was super happy again. But but the last time um, I, I hadn't fully hit menopause. And so this, the switch, what I thought w was fully switched, it didn't until um, the last couple months, uh, a couple months ago, I read Esther Blum's book, See You Later Ovulator. And then I was like, oh my goodness. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and now I've, I've definitely hit my hormone crash. And so that's when I, I definitely called up my practitioner. I said, okay, yes, let's please, let's get me on some bioidentical hormones. <laughs> and, um, but, uh, I, I've definitely seen it, um, on both sides of my, uh, family, uh, both my side as well as my husband's side of the family. And, um, exper they've experienced a lot of the, I like to call them technical difficulties, um, which are unfortunate, some of the side effects of that have gone from not getting the proper care. Um, and it, like you said, it's mainly because um, doctors didn't know, just just including the little things like like bladder leakage, you know, and it's so unfortunate because um, people think that it's normal um, when it's not normal. And because they know that other women are experiencing some of these things too, it's common, but it's definitely not normal. And so, um, it, yeah, it's just unfortunate because it's, it's definitely not necessary by any means. So when we, yeah, when somebody comes in, generally there are people who are not exactly sick, but you know, they know they could feel better. They're tired, they're bloated, they're achy, they got brain fog, they can't lose weight. They've got no interest in sex, like just a whole constellation of symptoms and what we do is we start off by looking at four pillars of health. So of course, we're looking at hormone balance. We're also looking at digestion and nutrition because there's a huge connection between gut health and hormone health. We look at toxins in the environment because so many toxins are hormone disruptors and they can be the cause of why you're having your hormone symptoms in the first place. And we look at lifestyle habits because if you're not fueling your body with the right nutrients, if you're not getting enough sleep, you know, if you've got crazy stress, those are all huge causes of hormone imbalances in women. So we look at this whole comprehensive approach. We do hormone testing to understand what your unique pattern of hormones looks like because we're all very different. Um, and then using nutritional supplements, lifestyle changes, and where needed, 
bioidentical hormones, we work to bring women back in balance because it's all about being in balance. A lot of times what we find is one hormone will be kind of high normal and another hormone will be kind of low normal. And technically they might, both might land in the lab range. So, so often women go in and even if you can beg your doctor to measure your hormones, you just get told you're normal, which is super frustrating, isn't it? When you know you don't feel good. But if one is kind of high normal and one is kind of low normal, then you're out of balance and you don't feel good and you have symptoms. And if we could just balance you back out again, you can feel like yourself. And, you know, that's literally the book that I wrote is called This Is Not Normal, because that's what women come in and say, like, I don't feel like myself. Like, this is not normal. This is not me. I just want to feel normal again. Yeah. And I think I think you've said it. I've heard you say it before. Um uh, Annika Becca has a saying that um, menopause, menopause is mandatory, but suffering is optional. And that's just so true that um, most people think that it's normal and it's, it's just not, it's not normal. And like I said, too many people are suffering and it's, and it's definitely unnecessary. And um, recently when um, I went for my bioidentical hormones to my practitioner, they told me that legally they were still obligated to tell me that um, bioidentical, because they were prescribing me bioidentical hormones, um, that um, there was still a risk for breast cancer. And they read off this whole slew. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I said, that's fine. I understand that you have to tell me that legally, but I know that that's not true, unfortunately. And and again, these people are, are, are practicing functional medicine, but they're then beholden to um, some of the drug companies and the legality aspect of it, uh, which is, is very unfortunate. I get all riled up when we talk about this. So um, when I was in medical school in the early 90s, we were taught that all women who go through menopause should go on hormone replacement therapy for their own good, because it protected our heart and our brain and our bones. So we would have less osteoporosis, less heart disease, less dementia. Um, in 2002, a big study came out that was supposed to prove once and for all that hormones were the greatest thing since sliced bread. And instead, what we found was that there was an increase in the risk for breast cancer. So overnight, hormones went from greatest thing since sliced bread to bad, dangerous, scary. And every gynecologist's office in the country rang off the hook. Women went off their hormones in droves. It was like this huge, big thing. And for doctors, it... it horrified us to think that we were recommending something that was increasing the risk for breast cancer. So um, over the last 20 years, we've had all these years to go back and actually look at that particular study and do a whole bunch of other studies in the meantime. And what we now know is that hormones don't increase your risk for getting breast cancer. Estrogen in particular, because Estrogen is the one that got a bad rap. But in that original study, the women who had an increase in the risk for breast cancer had a teeny weeny little increase in the risk. There were seven extra breast cancers per 10,000 women. So that's not even 1%. But that very tiny risk was only seen in the women who were given a combo pill that had estrogen with a drug form of progesterone. So don't take that pill. The women in the study some women were only given estrogen in their pill. And not only did those women not have an increase in the risk for breast cancer, they actually had a slight decrease in their risk for breast cancer. But overall, even in that study, even the women that got the combo pill that was increasing the risk for breast cancer, on the whole, women had less colon cancer, less lung cancer, less hip fractures. They were less likely to die younger if they were on the hormones, even the one that had the risk for breast cancer, than if they were not on hormone therapy. So now all these 20 years, we understand better how to do it, not to use that pill. We can use the natural form of progesterone, the bioidentical form instead of the drug form. That one has not been shown to be uh, associated with the risk for breast cancer. We have more and more studies showing that being on estrogen replacement therapy not only does not increase the risk, but seems like it probably slightly decreases our risk for breast cancer. And... Women who are on hormone replacement therapy and get breast cancer anyway, because we can get breast cancer from genetic reasons, from toxins in the environment, from radiation. So whatever causes your breast cancer, if you get breast cancer and you're on hormone replacement therapy, you are actually 
have a better prognosis. You're less likely to die from breast cancer if you were on hormones than not. And we're diagnosing breast cancer earlier and earlier these days. So most women who do get diagnosed with breast cancer are going to die of heart disease and hormones help to protect your heart. If you are diagnosed with breast cancer, you're still more likely to die from complications after a hip fracture and hormones help to protect you from osteoporosis. So for the vast majority of women, the benefits of hormone therapy far outweigh the risks. Um, it helps prevent frailty so that we don't become such a frail little old lady. We can't even stand up out of the chair without somebody helping us. Um, it helps to prevent urinary leakage so that we don't have to spend all day shopping in the Depends aisle at the grocery store because we're wetting ourselves all the time. Helps maintain sexual function so that intercourse isn't painful um, and dry and unpleasant. It, it helps to prevent wrinkles. I mean, it helps keep our skin looking younger. There's just so many important benefits of hormones. And we've done, us doctors have done the huge disservice to women, an entire really two generations of women uh, by scaring them off hormone replacement therapy over fears that were overblown and unfounded and frankly wrong. But because that got so seared into doctors' brains that we might have been doing something that was causing harm to women, it's taken so long to try to change that thinking. And even today, there are so, so many doctors who are afraid of prescribing hormones, who still believe that hormones are going to increase women's risks for breast cancer. They're still telling women to go off the hormones, you know, maybe be on them for just a few years and then stop them when there's no science to say that you have to stop the hormones because you hit a certain birthday. Um, so it's been so difficult. And, you know, what I hear from other practitioners is that the, the big problem is that doctors aren't trained in this at medical school. In fact, I just talked to a nurse practitioner yesterday who works in a urogynecology office. So gynecologists obviously you know what that is but a urologist is the kind of doctor that looks after like bladders and urinary problems and so these are gynecologists that look after urinary problems and hormones play such a monstrous you know important role in whether you're leaking urine and you know what's going on in your pelvic floor and so this nurse practitioner is learning about hormones and she's talking to these women every day and she can see how much hormones would help them. But when she goes to her supervising the doctors who are in charge, who sort of make the rules about what she is and is not allowed to do in her job, basically what they told her was, oh my gosh, we don't want to have to deal with hormones. Can you imagine like the horror? So they don't want to learn about hormone therapy. They like to do the procedures that they do that's, you know, covered by your health insurance. Um, and, and they just, they don't know. And because they don't know, they don't want to know, they're kind of afraid to know because, you know, they got burned before. So many women are suffering unnecessarily. You know, maybe can we just take a second to talk about like what's natural? Because that's another thing that a lot of people feel like they just want to go through things naturally. And then if we start to talk about hormones, you know, they sort of, you know, feel like they don't want to go there. And when you're in this perimenopausal time in your life, you know, from, you know, it can go for 10 or 15 years, the symptoms leading, it's like puberty in reverse, right? Um, and it's not so much that you need hormone replacement therapy, but your hormones are shifting and there's so much that we can do to bring you back in balance so that you don't have to have hormone symptoms. Once you go through menopause and your ovaries stop working, there's no herbs, there's no exercise, there's no nutrition plan, like nothing is going to bring those hormones back. So you can take herbal supplements, like there are some over the counter natural things that you can do that can take the edge off your hot flashes and help you sleep a little better. And that's great. And it's perfectly fine, you know, if you find something that works for you, but it's not going to help build bone and prevent the skin wrinkling and keep your heart healthy and keep your brain sharp and, and you know, prevent frailty. So there's no herb that can do that. And hormones are FDA approved for hot flashes and osteoporosis. It's just that doctors are scared of hormones because we got burned all those years ago. Um, I have a friend who's a gynecologist and I really like what he says about this idea that it's natural to go through menopause without hormones because, you know, we didn't 100 years ago, 150 years ago, we didn't live much past menopause. We were sort of done. Um, but what he says is 
you know, when we get a little older, our eyesight changes, right? And now we have to start holding the piece of paper like way out in front of us because, you know, in order to be able to read it properly. And we don't tell you, yes, this is a normal part of aging. Your eyesight is changing. You're just going to have to learn to live with it. You won't be able to read anymore. That's not what we tell people. What we say is, yes, this is a normal part of aging. Here's your reading glasses so that you can continue to be a productive and functioning member of society. Um, and so I think of hormones kind of like reading glasses. Yeah, I love that. That's such a great analogy and a great way to look at it. Um, I'm definitely going to use that with my clients. And um, yeah, because I don't prescribe or anything like that, but I do have some practitioners that I then refer um, my clients out to, especially when I feel like they could really benefit from some hormone therapy or diving deeper into their hormones. Um, and I do have one client who's very skittish. I'll, I'll call her skittish about hormones and hormone replacement therapy um, or even seeing someone specifically for their homo hormones, whether it's bioidentical or uh, regular hormones, synthetic hormones. But I'm definitely going to use that because I think it's a great analogy and a way for people to kind of rephrase or reshape their thoughts about it. Um, because if you have something that's going to help you, like you said, it's not just for your vision, but it's going to help you feel better. Just being able to read a menu again and have more confidence and then you're naturally just happier. Um, so it's definitely going to change your mood and everything else is going to spill over into so much more then. Yeah, you'll be able to take care of your family and continue on in your career and, you know, take care of your home and your dog and whatever you people depend on you. You got things to do, right? We've all got like purpose in life and um, we all deserve to be able to love the way we feel. Yeah, I, I definitely love that. And I think that's kind of a great way uh, to sort of wrap up our conversation and it, it's ending on a great note. But before we go, I'd like to first ask you... Um, for your don't miss this moment, I always ask my guests uh, at the end of every conversation for their don't miss this moment. It's kind of their key takeaway or their key thing that you would not want the listener to miss. So uh, what would be your don't miss this moment from our conversation today? I would say that if you're not feeling good, hormones, whether hormones can be part of the problem. And so getting your hormones back in balance, which doesn't have to be hormone replacement therapy, but everybody deserves to have balanced hormones. And living well is the best medicine. Your doctor doesn't have a magic pill. You have so much control over your own health, which is great news. And so the thing that I would want everybody to leave here with is the idea that living well is the best medicine. No, oh, I love that. So why don't you tell uh, my listeners uh, where they can find you, follow you, and even get your book? Yeah. Okay. So my medical practice is in Charlotte, North Carolina. And for people who want to come and see me in my practice, they would have to come to North Carolina at least one time um, in order to establish that doctor patient relationship. And we have people that come in from all over the country. Um, my website has a lot of information. It's signaturewellness.org. So you can go just to learn more. If you really want to dive in and learn, um, I wrote a book because I felt like a lot of women were coming in to see me and what they were saying was like, here's my list of symptoms, but I'm not really sure if hormones could be the problem. So the book is called, This is Not Normal, A Busy Woman's Guide to Symptoms of Hormone Imbalance. And it's got lots of checklists and quizzes. So you can kind of go through and see like, does it seem like your testosterone might be too low or your cortisol might be too high? It's got tips for how you can start to get your hormones back into balance. It's also got listings of those resources for where you can go to try to find a doctor near you who can help you. Um, you can To get a free copy of the book, you can find it at isityourhormones.com. Wow, there's a free copy too. That is so awesome. I did not realize that. Um, I will put some links to you in our show notes along with some of the um, websites that you referenced earlier, those uh, websites uh, for the functional medicine. Well, I really want to thank you again for being on today and for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, away from your evening, uh, from your family and stuff. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Brain MD nutraceuticals are high quality supplements specifically designed to support and enhance brain health. Developed by Dr. Daniel Amen and his team of experts, these supplements use carefully selected ingredients backed by scientific research to promote cognitive function, mood stability, and overall mental wellness. 
BrainMD's commitment to purity and efficacy assures that their supplements provide targeted nutrition for the optimal brain performance and long-term brain health. Be sure to click my link in the show notes. If you want to continue learning and hearing all things nutrition for your mind, body, and soul, click like, subscribe, or favorite me on whatever podcast platform you use, or you can find me at ForgivenNutritionist.com. This podcast was designed to educate, inspire, and empower you to achieve your health and wellness goals. It is not meant to diagnose or treat any illness or medical condition or take the place of any treatments from your current health care providers.